I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes on some verses from Titus chapter 3. I've quoted the verses in question just below this video clip, and you can follow along in your Bible if you will. Let me read the verses, the relevant verses to you. Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 8. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy. And I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. Titus 3, 4 to 8. Of course, Titus 3 is one continuous passage with Titus 2. And in Titus 2, Paul said the, very much the same things as he's going to say here. He doesn't mind repeating himself. He wants to make a vital point, and he wants Titus to get it, and to do it. What's that? Well, as he closed the previous chapter, too, I want you to teach these things. And we get very much the same here. I want you to stress these things, to insist on these things. Now, I've already published a short clip on Titus 2. In this clip, I want to look very briefly at a vital principle set before us by the Apostle in Titus chapter 3. It's vital in this debate over the law. It's vital in this question about what is New Covenant theology? How does it differ to covenant theology. What's the difference between a man of the new covenant position and a man who preaches the law and insists on the law? Well, Titus chapter 3 has a great deal to say about it. Look at the opening of the section that I'm dealing with. Could anything be clearer? Here we have poor, wretched, hopeless, helpless sinners, saved, justified, accounted righteous, perfect in God's sight. How is that possible? By the mercy, by the love, by the grace of God in Jesus Christ, by the working of the God Spirit, applying the merits, person and work of Christ to the poor, wretched sinner justified freely by grace for by grace are ye saved for by grace are you justified by faith are ye saved by grace you see it's all of grace through faith by the operation of the spirit that is how a sinner receives the merit the work the glorious accomplishments of the lord jesus christ but there's no quarrel over that, is there? At least amongst the Reformed and Evangelicals and the New Covenant men. We all agree that the on the necessity uh, of the regenerating power of God's Spirit, of the effective accomplishment of Christ on the cross, the precious blood to wash us from our sins, and that once a man trusts in Christ, he is forever righteous, accounted righteous in God's sight, free of condemnation, absolutely spotless, without any wrinkle, stain, any spot or marring whatsoever. And he one day will be glorified, transformed to be like Christ and with him forever. There is no question of it. It is all by God's grace, 
from first to last. Free grace, sovereign grace, God's grace. And we glorify God for it. But what now of this believing man, this believing woman? They've just been converted. They have a pilgrimage to undertake before they reach that final, complete, and absolute glorification. What are the years in between? Well, of course, that's where progressive sanctification comes in. Good works, Christ-likeness, obedience to the Word of God, uh, reflecting Christ to a fallen, putrid, uh, decadent world, living for Christ in a hostile culture, progressive sanctification. How do we get that? That's the question. And that was the point that Paul was making to Titus. I want you to insist, he said, to stress, to teach, that believers must live progressively sanctified lives. But he doesn't actually say that, but of course that's underneath it all. What he does say is, we know that that's what must happen. Of course that must happen. But the question is, what must Titus stress? What must he teach? What must he insist on as the way for believers, he that believes, to reach that progressive sanctification? To attain to that Christ-likeness. Read the passage I'm working on. Is that not what Paul says to Titus? Is that not the teaching here? I want you to insist on, on what? That's the point. Now there's the great divide. If I watch the Reformed at work, if I look into John Calvin's writings, if I see the Puritans at work, if I see the modern Puritans at work, the covenant theologians, the lawmen, I know what they'll say. You must get these believers back under the law. Teach the law. The moral law, they will say, the Ten Commandments, but the law. Get them under the law. There'll be no sanctification. There'll be no progressive sanctification unless they get under the law. The law will be the whip, the standard, the rule, the perfect rule of life for them. Teach them that. Insist on it. Stress it. That's what they'll say. That's what they do say. And millions are trying to live that out, believing that to be the truth. It's false. Calvin said it. The Puritans said it. The Great Confessions say it. Many of them. Oh, yes. But it's still wrong. How dare I say that? Well, I don't say it. Paul says it. He told Titus, I want you to insist on what? I want you to insist on what? To bring these believers to progressive sanctification. Just before I answer that, let me insist on another point. The covenant theologians at this point say that people like me are antinomians because we don't go down their route. How do I reply to that? Rubbish. That's an insult. Anyway, you're insulting Paul and accusing Paul of the very same. Because look at Titus 3. He did not, did he? He did not insist on the law to sanctify these believers. That is the very thing he did not do. What did he insist on? Now here is the staggering thing, but it is the gospel, it is the scripture, it is scriptural truth, it is new covenant theology. What did he insist on? He insisted on the very things, the very doctrines, the very powers, the very works that brought the sinner into Christ. Insist on the grace of God. Stress the mercy of God. The regenerating power of the Spirit. Stress what Christ has done for sinners and their justification by grace. And that will sanctify them. Oh, yes. The more we consider Christ, the more we contemplate what we are and what we have in Jesus by the Spirit, the more we look to Him, fix your eyes on Him, Consider him, says the writer to the Hebrews. 
Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, says Paul to the Colossians. And so on and so on. He says the same everywhere. What is that? The way to be progressively sanctified is by looking to Christ. Looking to one's position in Christ as a believer. Looking on to the glory to come. Setting our hearts and minds upon Christ. Feeling and knowing the energy and power of God's Spirit within the soul. Assuring us leading us on to sanctification and Christ-likeness. Oh, that's fuzzy, warm sentiment, says the covenant theologian. Does he? Well, then say it to Paul. Go on, say it to Paul. For Paul insisted that Titus must stress the grace of God, the mercy of God, the regenerating power of the Spirit, and so on. Why? Because that will be saving for sinners. And that will be sanctifying for saints. And that's why I'm a new covenant well, theologian or a new covenant man. Why? Because it's apostolic. Because it's scriptural. I know it's not confessional according to the great confessions. I know it's not Calvinistic according to John Calvin. I know it's not puritanical. And I know I'm out of step now with a great many of the great teachers in the world today. The Christian world today. I'm sorry about that, but I must say, let God be true, and every man a liar, if that has to be, and therefore, I will preach, I will try to preach, as Paul insisted Titus should preach, I will preach what? Jesus Christ and him crucified. We preach Christ Jesus as Lord. That was the apostle's way. That's what he insisted on for Titus in Crete, Timothy in Ephesus, the Philippians, the Romans, the Ephesians, throughout the scriptures. And it still stands today. New covenant theology, made simple, well actually made plain, well actually all I've done is taken the apostolic statement and put some lines underneath it and let the apostle speak for himself stress the grace of God he says stress the grace of God preach the law he wouldn't know what they're talking about preach Christ and by God's grace I will do so how about you my brother how about you my sister what do you say to these things